Tonight, we finish the rat strat. We're getting started right now. All right, time to put the finishing touches on the rat strat, which I actually already did. Yesterday we did the wiring, so I got some nice chrome volume and tone knobs on here. Got some Daddario strap knobs, cat eye shape, hold the strap on kind of like a locking, but without all that extra mechanism. Got our Goto tuners, got our Tusk nut, got our Icon plates, skull plate, got our Emerson Pro pots in there, all kinds of other good stuff. So all we got to do now is string it up, try it out, and do the setup. Let's do it. Okay, for this guitar we're going to use Ernie Ball Super Slinky 942s. So we have a 9, 11, 16, 24, 32, 42. Okay, I'm going to do this without video because I don't want you to fall asleep. All right, interesting development here. Put strings on uh, and I could not get them to get off the fretboard. Uh, the uh, neck had a little bit of bow in it, I guess, from being neglected, sitting around for so long, change of temperature in here. So I put my straight edge on there and I saw there was some bow. So I did the truss rod adjustment with the Allen wrench. Lefty loosey, righty tighty, and I loosened it up to take some of the back bow out. Still had buzz. I finally got the strings to where they would tune up, but I have, unfortunately, all the saddles are up really high. And that's not good. So, I, I backtracked a little bit. Okay, so I straightened the neck out. I probably could go another half a turn or so, but I thought... You know, one thing I never did when I put this nut in, the Graph Tech nut, was compare it to the old nut. So I figured, well, you know what? I loosened up all the strings, pulled them off to the side, popped this out. And when I sit them side by side, I don't know if you're going to be able to see that difference, but there is a difference in height. So, I took a piece of handy, uh, this is shimming veneer, uh, this is mahogany, I believe. Um, I have other birch and some other types of wood too but what I did was take this mahogany okay sat it on a flat surface here took my nut late you can see where I cut this piece out laid it on here up against the straight edge and then I just took a razor blade and ran along here and cut, scored it, broke that out. So now I have a little shim. And when I put, I found when I, this is 1 16th. I have some 132nd stuff that's thinner than this. When I put these side by side with the old one on the flat surface and the new one on top of this shimming material, 
lo and behold, they are the same height. Or much closer to being the same height. So, what I'm going to do is take this shim and run it in here. I got it to fit perfectly now by using a, a piece of I just took some 180 sandpaper and I took this little card here very gently grab this put the card underneath so it's flat set it down and, and just rub this against the edge flip it over sand it like that now it will fit right in here beautifully and just a little bit more off of this end a little bit more off of this end a little more so I just need this to slide in here and then I'll put the nut in on top of it I'm going to use a little dab of uh, just the tiniest little dab of glue because I don't want this to slip around. Sand these ends down a little bit. You don't need it sticking out the side. past the edge of the uh, nut. There. Pretty good. All I'm going to do is glue, put a little dab of glue on the Glue this to. Ah. First, I'm going to drop it on the floor and lose it a couple times. And then I'm going to glue it. I'm going to glue this onto the nut and not into the nut slot because then if I need to make any adjustments if it's too high I can sand it down sand it off chip it off whatever just a little bit of glue don't need a lot I managed to get glue all over everything I'm just going to glue that on there and I'm going to let that dry and then uh, I'm going to put my newly shimmed nut in there and maybe that'll raise that string height enough 
on the low end to offset some of this up here. I know it'll help a little bit, but I still may have to take some other steps, but that's the next step. I'm gonna let this dry, then I'm gonna put it in. Okay, here here's the issue. I had to take the whole thing apart, test this out. This pot, volume pot, has a bad spot in it. Uh, I tried to clean it, but when I turn it, it would get to about six or seven, and it would just cut out, and then it would come back. Same thing going down, down to about six or seven, cut out. So, ordered a replacement. Same thing. Uh, Emerson Pro 250K audio taper volume pot. So I'm going to put this back in here and resolder everything, but this time. I am going to test the sucker out before I screw on the screw on the pick guard. How am I going to do that? You'll just have to wait and see. All right. Well, <clears throat> got it soldered back up. guard on I don't have it nailed down and it's not in perfect tune I'm just kind of half tuning it by ear just to get some test so I have nice volume sweep and I put a tone bleed circuit on here so when I turn the volume down with the tone up Maintains the highs. Probably can't hear it too well. And then I have the blender pot on here. So we're also getting combinations of the bridge and the neck pickup. You probably can't hear that, but I can hear it. And it seems to be keeping the tone rather well. There is a horrible buzz though. And it needs to be tuned. So, at least I got the volume pot fixed and everything works so now i can put this back on and then work on tuning it up and getting the setup done Okay, before I explain what I did, I just want to explain that I have volume, master tone, and a blender pot on here. Now the blender combines bridge and neck, depending on what setting you have it on. And where you turn the dial.
And then if you turn it to 10, it cuts out the signal. On the volume, I have a treble bleed. So when I have my tone up and my volume up, and I turn the tone, the volume down, still keep the tone. Keeps the tone up while you turn the volume down. Okay, so what I did was What I did was I could not get the action to come down to where it was even playable without buzzing. Now I admit right now it's a little high, probably maybe a little higher than Kyle's going to like it. I don't know, but if that's the case, then we'll play with it down the line. But uh. And we're looking at like two and a half millimeters. For me, this isn't a bad action, but uh, anyway, it can be adjusted if, if necessary. <laughs> but what I had to do was I could not get this. I had the saddles adjusted all the way up as high as they would go, and it still would not stop buzzing. So I did the strings, uh, and I worked on the with the truss rod a little bit, but I don't think the truss rod adjustment's working. I think it's stripped on the inside of this neck because I just can't get it to to bow. I can't get any bow in it. It's got a little bit of back bow, and it's kind of stuck there. So. What I did was take this off at the neck and you can see here I put a shim in on the front end. Uh, this is, um, let's see, one sixteenth I believe. Uh, hold on a second. I have to get this out. Okay, uh, 1 32nd, sorry, 1 32nd birch plywood, get it at the uh, craft store like uh, AC Moore, uh, Michaels, places like that, Hobby Lobby. I also have, uh, this is uh, 1 64th inch mahogany. So I took a piece of this one thirty-second inch birch and put it on this this end of the neck pocket, not in here at this end. So it's back to about from here to about here it's shimmed. And then when I put the screws back in, what it did was drive this back end of the neck down further. You can maybe see there's a slight downward angle. That was what I needed to pop the strings up off of the fretboard. So I put the saddles all the way down to nothing, it's flat. And then just raise them up just a tad off of the flat surface. Then, when I restrung it, it <laughs> was way up. It was way too high. So I had shimmed this nut before. So I took the nut off, took the shim out of there, put the nut back in. 
and uh, now I got it set up pretty nicely. Uh, the intonation's pretty darn close to perfect. Uh, my blender pot works. My treble bleed works. So I didn't have to. Uh, I didn't have to do anything else drastic. I was able to keep the original bridge, original pick guard. Got these awesome chrome knobs. So it looks beautiful. There it is, right strap. Finally finished, and I'm, I'm happy with it. It was a little frustrating at points, but Hey, pretty nice looking guitar, and it sounds really good. So, thank you for sticking with me on this build. I know it's been a long time and frustrating and wacky videos and everything else, but uh, next thing I'm going to build is my P bass that my son got me for Christmas. He got me the body and. Uh, some of the hardware and awesome pick guard and I got everything else I got all the parts so I'm ready to get started with that now that this is done and in between there I'm going to fiddle around with another uh, guitar another Strat style uh, Starcaster actually it's a friend of my son's and it just needs to be uh, kind of fixed up and put back together so I'm going to work on that too but in the meantime uh, thanks for tuning in and if you haven't already please subscribe and take care rat strat awesome